Hello and welcome to the next video in the quad efficiency build. Now this video we're actually going to get round and finally do the testing with the motors that I've got here to try. Now just a couple of caveats of course before we get into this. I, I'm looking at using these modern motors in a slightly unusual way. These lower KV motors are really designed to support things like 6S batteries and I don't want to use 6S batteries and have a super duper fast machine. I'm actually interested in building a quadcopter that will fly for longer than seven or eight minutes. Now I did look recently at a quadcopter that seemed to be going along the same lines that really gave me a boost about what the art of the possible looked like. And it was this thing here. This is the Diatone GTM515 using 1806 motors, which are pretty old school motors, but it produced over 15 minutes flight time on a 1300 4S battery. So definitely possible, but we're going to explore in this video what we can actually do with these motors that I've got. So to continue the caveat, uh, we are using the motors in a slightly wacky way. Different ESCs will also produce different results. I'm using this Race Star ESC here. It just happens to be one of the ones that I've got handy that has the biggest amp rating. And as I don't know how many amps these motors are going to pull, because rather disappointingly, the motor manufacturers, particularly people like Emacs at the moment, I haven't looked at the website recently, it might have changed, but they're not publishing the thrust data for these motors very well. So this is why I'm having to do these tests because in theory you can run this from anything from three, four, five or six S with lots of different size props and also lots of different number of props. So two bladed, three bladed and whatnot. And unfortunately they just don't seem to be bothered in kind of working all that out. So I'm gonna to have to do it here in the video. Be careful that the props that I'm using here are really old style seven by 4.5 inch props. Um, different props, uh, this different design with the same pitch and diameter will produce different results. In fact, I was talking to somebody who makes large quadcopters the other day and the difference can be up to 20% between a high quality prop that's well made and one that it should produce the same results but isn't made very well at all. It's a one-off test, it isn't scientific, it's just me with a thrust meter and all the other bits and pieces just having a go. Couple of generic rules about motor efficiency to keep in mind when we're doing this. And if you want me to go into more detail this and how you calculate relative thrust, things like that, do pop a comment in the comments below and I'll do another video. But I didn't want to get that technical because there's a bit of maths in here anyway already. But the two rules of thumb is first of all, is that a larger prop being spun by a slower motor, a slower motor is going to mean typically lower KV, is going to produce thrust more efficiently than a very quickly rotating motor spinning a small bladed prop. In fact, I've got a video that proves that. I'll put a link in the description if you want to go and have a look at it. The second bit of received wisdom is the number of blades on the prop will make a difference too. The most efficient prop actually has one blade. And if you ever watch uh, somebody called Night Flyer, who has another channel here on YouTube. He's a gentleman that's been in the hobby for a very long time and has a massive amount of experience. And he has a lot of videos where it's a single bladed rotor on things like helicopters. And they're fantastically efficient. They're just not very practical. So I'm gonna be just using two bladed props in the test. So what am I gonna be testing? Well, I'm gonna be testing the three motors. I've also managed to get my hands on another one for an old school one that we're gonna have a play with. First one is this thing here. This is the Emacs RS2, a nice modern lightweight motor. It's a 2306 motor with a 1600 kV, and it's one of the lowest kVs available in that particular motor type. I would have preferred a 1250 or lower, but the 1600 is the one I've got here. Also got the Racestar BR2508. I think that's a 1250 kV motor, a little bit heavier than the Emacs, but interesting for comparison. And the last motor here is this old fella. Some of you might remember these. Uh, we were making quadcopters out of them back in the day. This is a Turner G D2822 1450 kV motor. And I used to use them to spin the seven by 4.5 inch props back in the day before completely distracted with all this five inch shenanigans. Now what we're gonna do in the test is we're gonna use this rig. Uh, we're gonna use the thrust tester. Where I have a watt meter in series with the motor and prop combo so I can see how many amps it's pulling and also see how many watts is being pulled as well. And I'm using a servo checker with a display plugged into the ESC and that's going to provide me with the ability to control the thrust and find out exactly how everything's gonna work. 
Now, links for all the pieces are in the description stuff down below if you want to have a go and try this out yourself. Now, the original intention was to use it on 3S and 4S and also use 7 and 8 inch props. But as we'll see in a minute, that kind of becomes irrelevant pretty quickly. So let's start off with our friend, the Emacs motor. I'm a massive fan of Emacs stuff. I do love them. And these motors are fantastic. And they've just proved how good they are with the testing that I've done this morning. So here's the chart that we're going to fill in together over the next few minutes. So there's the three batteries at the top. Uh, the Emacs RS2 had tested with both 3S and 4S. And then I only tested the Raystar and Turnigy with 3S batteries but you'll see why when I start populating this thing. Looked for a couple of different numbers with each level. So I tested where the 170 gram pull was. 170 grams is where I'm estimating with the weight of the components for the quad that I'm building is going to provide me with forward flight. So it's above the hover point and it should provide me with easily enough thrust to kind of poodle around. So that is me hopefully kind of simulating me flying around. I'm gonna test the watts, the amps that are being drawn and also the actual pull that I produced. I'm going to aim for 170 grams, but it's quite a fine point with uh, this rig. Then I'll test what 50% throttle and 100% throttle looks like. Then we'll work out what the grams per watt is for the particular setup. The higher the grams per watt, the more efficient the motor and prop combo is. And we'll also keep a track of how much the actual motors weigh. Because if one motor is slightly more efficient than the other, but the other motor is an awful lot lighter, then that means that there's other things to consider as well. So let's have a look at the first set of data. So here it is all pulled in at 170 grams, I actually pulled 174 grams of thrust. It was only pulling about 2.2 amps, which is good. Watts were about 26.5. At 50% throttle, it was already up to 364 grams of thrust, uh, jumped up to 6.3 amps. And at 100% throttle, it jumped to 740 grams of thrust and pulled about 16.8 amps. So we're only gonna need a 20 amp speed controller if we use that setup. Grams per watt was about six and a half grams per watt, which is brilliant, much better than I was hoping for with some of the other rigs that we've been looking at so far with five inch props. We're lucky if we're getting three grams per watt, so that's significantly better. And the motor itself is about 30 grams. Next bit of testing then is to do that on a 4S battery because that was all on a 3S pack. This is where it got a little bit interesting. So at 170 grams of thrust, actually 167, so slightly under, uh, the watts went up a little bit. So it was higher, pulling 30 watts, but it was only pulling 1.8 amps. And if you remember, watts is the voltage times the amperage and the amperage goes down because the value of the voltage has gone up on a 4S pack. But if we increase to 100% throttle, it jumped to a massive 1.1 kilogram of thrust and it was pulling 26 amps. It stopped at 400 watts. I think that might be because that's the maximum on my watt meter, but the motor started to get incredibly hot, even just running it for three or four seconds to get these numbers off the rig. Looking at the efficiency of the motor on a 4S pack with the 7 by 4.5 inch prop that I was using, the efficiency was less on 4S, um, which meant that for this, I'd definitely be looking at a 3S battery. But the fact that the motor almost got too hot to touch, running it for four seconds, and uh, the Emacs motor is absolutely fine. It survived it brilliantly, where I'd expect some other less quality motors were smoked by doing that. It means for the other two motors, I decided not to push it on 4S, particularly as I think I got away with it with the Emacs with the skin of my teeth. Next motor that I tested then was the Raystar BR2508 with a 3S battery and to pull 172 grams of thrust, which again is what I think I'm going to need for uh, above a hover point kind of forward flight. We've got about 23.7 watts being pulled and only two amps, so a little bit less than the Emax motor. Total thrust available and 100% throttle was a 579 grams. So a 1250 kV motor is definitely a better bet for a longer range quad because the grams per watt has jumped up to a fantastic seven and a quarter grams per watt. The only downside with this is the motor itself is 
blooming heavy. It's actually 46 grams versus 30 grams. So with four of those motors, it's actually going to make my rig 64 grams heavier. So that needs to be taken into account. So just for a laugh, I decided to get this old energy set up and pop it on the thrust meter on the rig as well. And that produced some interesting results. It was very similar to the Emax RS 2306 1600 kV motor. But then the kV is very similar as well. The wattage was very similar. The amp draw was very similar. The overall thrust that it produces was 607 grams versus the 740 uh, grams of thrust at full power. But that again is because the kV is less. So looking at these numbers, the most efficient setup is the Race Star BR2508 with 7.25 grams per watt. Unfortunately, those are very heavy motors. So ideally, what would be amazing would be if I'd have had the Emax motors uh, in that size running at something like 1200 kV, maybe 1100 kV would have increased the efficiency even more. So what conclusions can we draw from this data? Well, apart from the fact that 4S is way too much, there's no point in me putting 8-inch props on this thing because we are getting more than enough thrust that we need and we're getting some decent efficiency numbers. So conclusions from this data. The first is the lower the KV, the more efficient the setup. So I could definitely get away with a lower KV with the Emax motor and hopefully with the Emax motor being lighter, I could still get more than enough thrust and more than enough efficiency for what I'm after here. I could, if I wanted to use an 18 inch prop for that efficiency, use a much lower KV motor. I'm probably looking at about something like a 900, 950, that kind of area I would su suggest for kind of a, an 18 inch prop. Or I could use much less pitch. So have a nice broad prop, but have a relatively low pitch. All the tested motors in this setup have way, way, way too much thrust for the model that we need. The model, I guessed, is going to be around 600 grams with that 3700 3S pack that I'm intending to use with this. So it means that I'm almost getting a 5 to 1 thrust to weight ratio. So it's probably going to be able to get in and out of trouble as well as potentially fly for a decent amount of time. Now, in the next video, what we're going to do is we're going to pop those Emax motors. Those are the ones I'm going to use just because they're so much lighter. Uh, I could go for the Race Stars, but I don't like the additional weight. I'm trying to use a really lightweight one in here. And who knows, if I can get my hands on some Emax motors that have a much lower KV, it might be worthwhile having a try. But I can, using the data that we've got from this, have a rough idea of how long that 3700 milliamp hour pack is going to last us. So we know from that data that each of the motors is going to be pulling roughly 2.2 amps in forward flight. Now that means because we've got four of them, it's going to give us 8.8 .8 amps. The battery itself is a 3700 milliamp hour pack where you we can only run 80% of that out of the pack before we're going to be in trouble. We have to leave 20% in. That's just how to treat a LiPo nicely. So we don't have 3,700 milliamp hours to use in the flight. We actually have 2,960 milliamp hours to fly with. So if we pulled 2.96 amps out of that pack, we should be able to pull that safely for one hour. If we doubled that and pulled 5.92 amps out of that pack, then we should be able to do that safely for 30 minutes. But actually, we know exactly what we need to pull. And you can use a little bit of maths. So if you divide the available milliampere hours, but actually if you do it as amps, divided by the number of amps we're going to use to fly, which is 8.8 .8 amps. And again, that's four times the 2.2 that each of the motor ESCs is going to pull then it works out that this model should fly guessing about 0 0.32 hours 0 0.32 hours equals about 19.77 minutes now that is what i'm talking about now if i had a 1200 kv motor i could probably get a best part of 22 23 minutes out of this but i'm happy enough that that's the kind of flight time that i was hoping for i was hoping for well over 15 minutes but the thing to do now is to build this quadcopter, install these motors and props, put it all together and see if that is what we get in real life.
If you found that video useful or like the content, then please hit the like and subscribe button down below. If you want to go the extra step, you can become a Patreon of the Painless360 channel and help provide support for what I do here. All the videos created here are put into playlists, so if you're interested in a particular topic, have a look at the playlist, and they all are organised in there to make them easier to use. If you're not sure if there's a video for your particular problem or topic you want to know more about, then add Painless360 to the Google search term that you're interested in, and that should find the video, article, or content about the particular thing that you're interested in having a look at.